Hey everyone, welcome back again to Joey's Final Collection channel. Your host once again, Joey himself. That's right, I'm back again in a long anticipated video for you all today with a special treat on this particular video. Um, I'm going to do a kind of a seal type of uh, reveal on this video or episode you may add. Um, I know I haven't created a video for already quite some time, maybe over like a month or so. So I do apologize for that circumstances as a lot of things, you know, in life gets to you with, uh, you know, work and all sorts uh, that we all could understand as well. But um, on this special video today, I like to start off by saying that this is going to be along with Elvis Records from basically international pressings. And I've been collecting from UK, uh, German, Australian, and by far most Japanese pressings. Now, this video is particularly going to be more focused on Japanese releases that I have acquired already for past, I would say, a couple of months since I started collecting international pressings. And I'll tell you one thing that I do, in fact, love these pressings that were made off and pressed during the time, uh, let's say from probably in the 60s that I have, probably of one or two, and then, you know, most of them were from the 70s, and probably a couple from the 80s as well that were released. Now, most of these records I have uh, acquired, meaning I have acquired from good friends of mine, uh, both Curtis Simpkins and Mark from Mark Elvis for Everyone channel. Uh, we were in contact many times, and as you all were maybe familiar when I did do the seal to reveal type of video of Curtis's uh, records that he has sent to me, also as bonuses when I have bought off the records off of him. So these records are mostly bought off from them too, and as well, probably a couple that I found through online, maybe on eBay or on Discogs. Now, the first one I'm going to reveal to you guys is in fact a very special record that I enjoyed thoroughly because it's Elvis's second gospel album. Now you all know what album that's gonna be. It's How Great Thou Art. Now this album particularly does come as a gay fold. Uh, it's in a very unique printing and the texture of this cover. I don't know if you guys can see, but um, here's the back cover of it. As you can see, it's a Japanese writing and as well, it's totally different track listing in order than US original pressing back from 1967. So I am going to take out the rec I mean, from the sleeve, so you all can see. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's clear. It's like a little rigidy type, and I feel like this is really a nice touch to it that they have done. Um, you could take a look at the spine. So this particular record, I actually, in fact, got it from Mark. So Mark, I truly appreciate it for you offering me this wonderful release of uh, Elvis How Great the Art that's pressed and released in Japan. So... You could take a look inside. It has lyrics, of course, in English and as well in Japanese writing as well, as you can see. Now, I've been also following already quite some time David from Japan and his channel. And I was just so fascinated. All his knowledge, his inform informative videos that he puts out there for all of us to understand. And plus a new book that I'm still waiting upon for arrival is um, From Memphis to Tokyo. That was by David Ward himself, and along I forgot who's the other author, but they calibrated almost about four or five hundred page book, and it comes along with a nice EP. So I cannot wait for that because that's going to have a lot of knowledge about Japanese pressings because I'm really fascinated into their releases. So as you can see, here's the record. It's on a black label, uh, Victor RCA, and the nippers on it as well. It's in a fantastic, fantastic condition. Take a look at that beauty. And here's side two. It does state as well that it is a Dino Groove. Super record. Fantastic. And I said again, release. And in fact, this is the original inner sleeve. Look how nice these inner sleeves were back then. That were actually released from Japan. Check this out. It even has an RC logo on the side right here. Nice stuff. Really almost like a MoFi. Original. Before the MoFi sleeves that were coming out. <laughs> So that's one of the records. Now, here's another record that I picked up from Mark. Now, this one's very fascinating as well. It's almost as a box set, but here it is on stage, February 1970, Elvis Presley. Nice looking copy. Here's the back. It does state as a gold disc uh, all around. There is a little discoloration, but of course, due to its age and 
you know, from all the time. And of course, it's going to be a little discoloring, but you can see it's really intact still. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's open up the box. And the box does open without any breakages, so I don't want to be a little careful. So I'm going to place this on my record turntable. Um, here is the record. Nice. I mean, I played this just yesterday once I got it in from uh, Mark when it was uh, delivered to my door. Take a look at the record. The sound is superb. I mean, it's just really like wide and open and so clear. I mean, it's to, to my ears, I feel like they have releases something just the beauty about it. And if any of you all out there that's Elvis fans, Elvis collectors as well, have some of these Japanese releases and pressings, you will understand what I'm talking about. So it does come with its original uh, kind of a uh, baggy sleeve. So the record's gonna go back in here. And it does come with a nice booklet as well, or like a poster, may I say, of Elvis. That's basically from the 68, the special. It does have other catalog from the gold disc, as you can see. So if you do open, it's like uh, pages, uh, basically probably in lyrics, and it's written, as you can see. It's all written in Japanese. And as well, there is in uh, English writing as well, as you can see. Nice touch to it. And I think this is really superb and phenomenal way they have done this work. And I think they took more dedication of releasing this type of uh, releases back then. Now, this one I found offline for a very really decent price. And I couldn't be more than happy because this condition is so superb. Take a look. That's the way it is that was released back in 1970. Take a look at that beautiful copy. Similar to almost like how the American release was. Um, I am going to take it out because this one, I actually am so fascinated. It does come with the OBI, the sticker on the side. Look how clean and beautiful. No wears, no tears, no nothing. What fascinating about this is when I open this first, you get the lyrics. But as well, you get this phenomenal, phenomenal looking poster of Elvis. Take a look at this. I mean, come on. Couldn't this been done in the U.S. releases as well back then? Check, take a look at that. That's Elvis right there during That's The Way It Is Productions. The record as well is in a fantastic condition. It does come with the, with, uh, with the inner sleeve, but I did put it in the Mofi. As you can see, the record itself is also in superior condition. Fantastic. I played this as well thoroughly. Ready maybe a couple of times as well. So... It's on the orange label. It's almost as a Dino Flex type, but really not. Yeah. So I'm gonna put that on the side for you as well. That goes there. This one I also picked up from Mark. Uh, this is basically Camden release of Burning Love and his hits from his movies. Also comes with a nice OPI sticker right here. Now, I'm not still particularly profound about all these about these obis and these stickers and all that good stuff um like i said i just started collecting mostly international prices and by far japanese most by far uh, as you can see in the back it does have everything written in japanese and english writing is right on the bottom and it does also come like the american release on a blue camden sticker the record is also in superb condition so i'll just let you guys know it's really nice, nice inner sleeve as well. That goes back in here. All right, off we go to next album that I also picked up, and I believe this was on eBay, less than twenty dollars. I think it was like not even uh, fourteen dollars for this one. Promise Land with a nice OBI sticker right here as well. Nice orange and blue type of a sticker. Now, for me, it's not about even about the whole thing about the sticker or this. It's about just listening to this gem. I mean, like I said already many times, and I'm going to say it again, the sound quality is just superb. It does come with its original inner sleeve of plastic, which I find this is a really nice touch to it because these don't scratch record and keep anti-static away. Really nice. It's on an orange label. So David... 
if you could, you could give me a little bit more insights, information on these releases that I'm showing to you on this video and for everybody. So I really want to know if this is actually the first pressing or maybe a letter print, later pressings that were released by RCA in Japan. Now this one I picked up also now from Curtis Simpkins. He's the one who sent me this beautiful copy of Moody Blue. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the OBI, but hey, that's all right. It's original just as, as the American release was, the U.S. pressing. Only has a little bit of state of RCA right here. Um, it does come also, uh, if I could just get everything out. i got to show you like on the other ones that I had, like this little sheets. As you can see. And as well, it's on an orange label. Again, with the beautiful inner plastic sleeve for the records. Sounds superb. I mean, to me, this copy sounds much better than the U.S. release that's on a blue vinyl. I understand because blue vinyl, it's a color vinyl. But let me tell you something. If you could grab a hold of this copy, pick it up. And this would be very, very, very fantastic uh, release to have in your collection that is basically... It's like international pressing, and especially from Japan. Now, this one is Elvis Volume Number no. Three, the Golden Hits record, and this was released back in 1973. And this was also given to me by Curtis Simpkins. So thank you, Curtis, for this wonderful gems. Really nice looking copy as well throughout. Nice touch, no breakages and everything, as you can see. Let's get off the record. It is on an orange label as well. Again, nice little plastic sleeve. There it is. Golden Records volume number three. And side two. Clean. So I'm just going to leave that on the side. Now, this is the anniversary. I believe it's the 50th anniversary that were released also in U.S., so I'm pretty sure this was released in 85. That's right. It comes with the OBI, as you can see, 50th anniversary. And this is Golden, uh, Elvis Golden Records volume number one. Um, don't be cruel. I believe the touch is a little bit... I'm not sure if it's different than American release, uh, the track listing on this one. But here we go. You can take a look. Beautiful looking copy. Also given to me by Curtis. It does come on the 50th anniversary label just as the US, as you can see. It comes with the sheet as well inside the inner sheet. And of course on the back is the American, I mean US uh, English lyrics as well. So that goes back here. Well, I'm just going to leave that here for now. Uh, we've got a couple more left, and now these both are ones that I actually bought off of Mark. So, next one I'm going to show you guys, this was released back in 1976. It's called Special 24, so 24 tracks of Elvis Presley. A beautiful, beautiful gatefold of this one right here. And I believe that this is mostly all like a stereo mix. Um, kind of, when I was listening to it, like Heartbreak Hotel... It sounded like almost it was like a stereophonic kind of type. I'm not 100%, but it is nice. Golden Special, it says Big Artists. 24 tracks. I could take it out of the sleeve so I can show you guys if I open the gatefold. As you can see, it has lyrics here. And take a look. The records are self. I can put it back in here. So, I'm going to take out one record for you guys to show. It does come with a generic white sleeve. Also, it's a similar, the, the second record is a similar one. On an orange label, sounds fantastic, superb, very quiet. Beautiful release. So, thank you, Mark, for offering me one of your nice collections of these Japanese pressings. And last but not least... This is called the Best Buy 2000, and it's on an OBI uh, gold type of a sticker. And uh, this was actually by request, I, I believe it's called, as you can see. It does have some fascinating tracks on it. And uh, we could go through it on this one. On side one, it does say, Can't Help Falling In Love. 
an American trilogy, Are You Lonesome Tonight, Suspicious Minds, Don't Be Cruel, How Great Thou Art, Love Me Tender, and If I Can Dream. That's on side one. And I think this is really a fantastic, fantastic uh, track listing on this record. Then you have on the side two, You Don't Have to Say You Love Me, I've Lost You, My Way, Poke Salad Annie, In the Ghetto, I've Lost That Loving Feeling, and last but not least is I Need Your Love Tonight. It is still in its original shrink wrap, as well as it does come with um, the inner sleeve, like I've been stating. It does state all the timeline about, I guess, in, it's in writing of, in Japanese. And then, of course, you got the lyrics in English. It also comes in the original plastic sleeve. I mean, I just love these releases, and when I put them on my turntable, I enjoy them thoroughly when I listen to them. So, side two. So that's that's about it on this video for you guys today. Uh, this is mostly persisting only on my recent acquiries of Japanese releases that are in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video thoroughly. Do leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, have you guys been collecting as well recently? Or do you have in your collection as well these type of Japanese pressing releases? Any other international pressings like UK, German, Australian, New Zealand, any type, um, you know, like Taiwanese and many out there and Malaysia. I mean, I'm not going to go with the list on and on, but uh, to be collecting that much amount, it's just going to be time and of course money as well. But I'm very grateful for these 10 that I have in my collection as of right now. And I look forward on uh, building on this collection as well into my Elvis Presley collection memorabilia so on so forth uh next video i'll be discussing with you guys it is going to be related about the two christmas albums that elvis have released on this special time of uh, season this holiday basically christmas is just right around the corner so i thought about having that kind of discussion and what would be my top favorite tracks from both of those albums plus also the single that was released if every day was like christmas which I think one of my favorite, very favorite songs from Elvis Presley. So guys, if you haven't, please hit like, please hit the like button on this video, as well as the subscribe button that's right on the below on your right side. Uh, if you'd like to get new uh, videos or notifications that are coming up on my channel, as well as I have created um, a Facebook account. So if you guys would like to add me as well on the Facebook, you could. I am going to put the link below on this video. So guys, again. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for always stopping by and being along with my channel and for the ride. Um, I always appreciate each one of you because, like I always say, loyal Elvis fans are out there so much just to try to keep his legacy well and found because he is well-deserved to do so. So, guys, wish you guys a wonderful and a blessed day. Stay safe. Stay well. Till then, catch you guys all. Until next time. Bye-bye.